Behind me, we have my X hoarder building. This building has never really had anything other than like two outlets inside of it for electricity. And the outside has always been an absolute muddy mess. So today we got two loads of rock. We got the electricians here. We're gonna change both of those things. I just stepped in mud. We're giving the dually another chance today. She got stuck in the middle of the road four times in a 12 mile trip the other day. We haven't got four wheel drive fixed yet, but we're gonna be trying it again today because you try it twice and it always works the second time, right? For typical farmer fashion, when the electrician told me it was going to be $313 per light to wire up in the shop, I said, <laughs> I think I'll do it myself. But he did say I could use his scissor lift. Don't talk about dream shops. <laughs> oh my goodness, this thing's huge. Look at that. I've never not seen it muddy over here, so this is nice. Cooper and I are not certified anything of anything, but we're gonna hook up this old tube heater. This is the burner, and the tubes are gonna go that way, and I just about fell out. So that piece is the burner bit, and then these are the shroudings for the tube heaters, and then those are the actual heaters themselves. Cooper and I are trying to figure out this tube heating system. It's kind of scratching our head a bunch and we got dad over on light duty trying to get the outside light switches wired up. He doesn't know what he's doing. So he's trying to use YouTube videos to figure it out. He's not done it done. Easy work? Oh, I'm getting myself confused here. If you're much like me, that you don't really understand electricity at all, the best way I can describe it is it flows like water. And we have some basic components. We have three wires. The green one is the ground. The blue one is the neutral. And then the orange one, that's the hot guy. That's the one that's got the zzz. So this is our power coming in from the power box. And then we have our light switches in between our individual light bulbs. So each of these individual light bulbs, when we turn on this switch, we want to be able to turn on that light. When we turn that switch, we want to turn that light. When we turn that bottom switch, we want to turn that light. So how do we do this? This is where even we get all the mess of wires going. The ground wire. This is the one that does not have any coating on it. It's just a gold wire. We're going to run all the grounds and we're going to put them into a wire nut and then we're going to electrical tape that all together and make it look nice and pretty. The blues, aka the neutrals. Those are pretty easy. They just all go into one wire nut, which brings us to our hots. This is where stuff gets interesting. The power comes into the switch and when the switch is off, it looks like that. So it's not letting the hot current go through. But when you turn the switch on, it looks like that. It lets the juice through and boom, we have a light that's on. So then now these other ones, we just end up connecting them up just like so. And then now we have electricity to that light. And then now we have electricity to that light. And that is why it looks so confusing inside of a electrical panel. Here, hold on a second. I got my 15 minute tanning appointment in quick. I think you need more than 15 minutes. Cooper and I hit a stopping point. We got that much of it up. That's basically how it's gonna look. The big thing we had troubles with initially was figuring out how far away from the wall we needed it, and then what angle we were gonna have it pointing. And look at this, huh? Lights, light over there. Oh, there's a skunk around the corner. We got light over here too, look at that. The perseverance dad had on this, it was very real. It, it's very <laughs> temporary right now with the jumper wire. <laughs> We'll let dad do his thing. When he gets his Black & Decker electrical manual out, you know stuff's getting real. Hey. Uh-oh, we don't have light over there. And this light switch is backwards. It says it's off right now when the light is on. <laughs> what do you think of my new rock outside, Justin? That's awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dad didn't like his spots. <laughs> Are we the only ones when we set up an electrical table, it always is just a random piece of plywood on top of a bunch of stuff and it looks exactly like this? How many amps do you think it takes for the three lights? I mean, is a 15 big enough? Oh, I'm my eye. 
We've been working hard today, but it took us a little bit longer around the breaker box than we anticipated. We had to recut the plywood and then put two by fours behind it. So that way we didn't have like a foot of plywood sticking out on the side. That slowed us down a little bit, so we did not get to the ceiling yet, but while Justin and Cooper were monkey ground with that, we consolidated. You know the wire we got rid of on the floor over there? That was the bundle that ran back to the furnace. And then this other bundle was what ran down from the door opener. So look at that now. We got everything running through the bottom of the box, just like we should. And these Romex wires are just temporary right now. They're gonna be ran through the bottom of the box, just like so but we are going to have the one going to the furnace. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna go up with it or if we're gonna go all the way to the end, then go up, but that's gonna go to the tube heater up high because that wire on the floor going to the furnace, that's all gonna be gone here pretty soon once we end up getting that hooked up. So we are no longer gonna have forced air furnace. It's all gonna be radiant tubing. We're going out on a little bit of a limb with the radiant tube system. Everyone's shop that we've been into that has one, they keep the shop at like 45 degrees, so it just feels like they're really cold and you know you feel it nice and warm when that thing kicks on, but then when it shuts off, it just feels cold. We like running our shops like 65 degrees. So we're hoping that it's gonna do a good job. It, it's gotta do a better job than this thing because you open the door, you lose all the air, and then this thing runs for half an hour. And what I'm looking forward to the most is not having to empty my water bucket every day. You will literally fill that thing in 24 hours and you come in here, there's a big old puddle of water all over the floor. It makes a bad day where the tube heater doesn't have any of that. It's actually gonna work out pretty good. Our exhaust vent for the furnace right now, that's not gonna be exhaust anymore. That's gonna be the fresh air intake that's gonna go up to the tube heater system. Reading the instructions, it says we do not have to go with the fresh air intake, but it says if we are in a dusty environment, it's recommended so that way we don't gunk up the inside of the motor. We have not really done a whole lot of work in this shop, and that is how much gunk has built up on the filter inside of here. So if we have that much gunk with just a little bit of work, once we start doing a lot of bit of work in here, we're, we're putting the fresh air intake in. This is a question for my HVAC slash gas guys. Can I come inside the wall, 90 the PVC straight up, then 90 it over. We are eight feet from the burner to the wall. So there's probably gonna be about 10 feet. And then for the gas line, when it comes to this collecting well, do I need to have it right by the furnace or right by the burner way up there on the ceiling? Or can I just put it right here where it's gonna come into the building? Cause then it'll just be sitting down here. Then everything will just be vertical right up above it to get up there. I don't see how it could be any different if it's down here, but I don't know anything about anything when it comes to this. So do I have to put it up there? Or can I put it down here? Okay. Ahora yo necesito pintar este uh, blanco. Mi español no es muy bien, pero yo prendo español 30, 30 minutos todos los días. Yo creo en dos años, I will be fluent in español. <laughs> or a lot better than I am now. But in a year, I've gotten there in a year. With that thing at Menards that shakes the paint. <laughs> I didn't think that one through very well, did I? I got this all cleaned up. Look at that. Paint's looking good. Two nice coats on there. We hit both of our goals today. We got electricity in the building and we got new rock down outside, so no more mud. Now it's just plug and play from here with the conduit. Oh yeah, we, we gotta get the ceiling done.